So we just worked hard on getting something turned in for our first assignment, our landscape composite. We're going to continue with building our compositing skills with the next unit, which you can get to by clicking on unit modules. And this is going to be concept work using compositing, but instead of a setting, we're going to do a creature. So this is unit five. Creature design is a lot of fun. But it, it's largely misunderstood by artists that attempt to do it. They think it has everything to do with the details. And really, it's just about the overall silhouette. So we're going to look at some ideas for that. We're also going to address our second question of the day as part of this unit. So start thinking about it. It relates back to chapter two in our online textbook, but also your own understanding of intellectual property and copyright protections. So let's just move through this pretty quickly. The creature that you're going to be designing does not need to be based on the fantasy setting that you created. So I don't want that to limit your creativity or your ambitions. But as a proving ground, after we're done with our creature composite, we are going to put that creature into our setting. But I make a big deal introducing that, and you can always look ahead to that unit, that your creature design does not need to match the setting in order for it to be believable as a narrative device. And I use Mary Poppins as an example, Space Jam as an example. You can put different kind of realities together as long as you match things like lighting and coloring and, and textures with things they're interacting with. And those are the kind of things we'll need to composite in to put a creature into our background. I've even had students turn like underwater creatures into like space floating creatures and huge creatures into tiny creatures, whatever you need to do. That's something that compositing allows us the flexibility. So this question of the day is something I want you to think about. We will uh, discuss it probably in two class times as a, uh, a class discussion, but we want to get it submitted by September 19th, something for it, and then you can always improve upon it. There's a great little video about Disney's use of copyright as the most litigious company how to protect yourself and how to protect your work from infringement. So Creature Collage made a little GIF animation. So you can composite with GIFs as well as with, with any raster image, right? Which is pretty, pretty fun. So how do we make a creature? Well, we start by sketching a lot like we did with our landscape, except this time we don't uh, wait to find reference to sketch. Instead, we sketch with basic shapes, and then we find reference that's going to fit that position, that body, that skeleton that we have in mind. So what, what's good as, as a, a media inspiration are Pokemon designs. Not that you're trying to match a Pokemon, though some students choose to do that, and that's a way to learn the skills as good as any other. But for instance, I took uh, this Pokemon and this Pokemon. And what I like about Pokemon designs, some seasons are better than others, but their silhouettes tell you what you need to know about them, right? If they're just a blank, black shape, you already know kind of the character of that creature, like how fast it is, where it lives, like how it moves. And so that's why it's a good inspiration. It also, they always show off an angle, usually a three quarter view that really demonstrates their skeletal structure, like how long their spine is, how long their limbs are. So I took these two and kind of mashed them up into this drawing. This is the kind of sketch you need for next class. And once you have this drawing, then you think, okay, what kind of real world references at high resolution can I use to make it? And I can see, you know, gecko, I can see rhinoceros, I could see uh, bones from whales, you know, all of them could be used. And then eventually I actually challenged myself to do this only with mushrooms. So I only use mushroom reference. And it looks a little less believable maybe because of that. But whatever the reference is, you're going to map it to this skeleton. And I use this as the example because you can even take something that has no spine no skeletal structure at all. And if you have your plan, you can make it look like it does. Right. 
So some, some past student examples. Your drawing can be done in any way you like as long as it really emphasizes the silhouette you're trying to achieve. And then your finishes will be a lot about the internal transitions to match that anatomy. So there'll be a lot of internal compositing on this, depending whether it's fur, feather, or scales, or some combination of them, right? And you can always find more examples that students used as their final portfolios in the Imgur. And to do that, you have to sign in, and you can find our information in the canvas under links for signing in because we do not make these public but this is for assignment two and you can see how important silhouette is so this was the pokemon they were inspired by this this ended up being their final project so they they kind of did this as a debrief after to see if they match the silhouette pretty well it's helpful once you make your sketch to have ideas about where you might find the reference. Because not only do you need to find the kind of animal you want, you need it at the right angle, the right clarity, and finding feet is always the hardest thing. Okay, so you can look through those. I like how this one did toothless from How to Train Your Dragon, but all out of believable sources. This one really tried to just make this Pokemon believable. On and on. So you can look through those. What you don't want to do is just make it like a cutout of a figure with a lot of things stuck onto it, right? You need it to feel dimensional and, and fully, fully rendered. And that's going to be the challenge. So you can see a lot of students like to use this project for their final portfolio. You can put a lot of your own personality into it. And you can find examples of what we're going to start next class just by looking for assignment to playlists in our class playlists, right? The most recent one being from last spring. So let's look at the assignment. You're going to digitally composite at least five found creature compositions. So these are usually photos that people take of animals. You want it to be a minimum of 8 by 10 by 300, but it can definitely be bigger. And I'm going to recommend Pixabay again. Same, same kind of thing. If you just want to look up a Pokédex to get started, that could be a good way. <laughs> and then you start sketching. And this is the way you sketch. You try to figure out how does that Pokemon or the thing I'm inspired by have the silhouette it has? What angle am I seeing it by? Where's the spine? Where's the head? Where's the rib cage? Where are the shoulders? Where are the hips? It does not need to be a complicated sketch to be incredibly helpful. Then you're going to make notes about where you might want to get that stuff. And then we're going to rough composite those elements on top of our sketch. Our sketch is going to be like the blueprint. And we're going to weld the the creature together from its chassis on forward and we make kind of a rough composite and then we have to work on kind of internal edges right and then we'll use things like dodge and burn and we're going to learn things like clone stamp to to bring everything together more believably and that will be it so i'll stay after class and i'm always available on through the course inbox with questions, but hopefully you will come with a sketch ready for next class. And it's a big work day on assignment two. Thank you guys.